Hi, I'm Paul Arnold, I'm the stuttering professor, and apart from doing strategic planning, facilitation and training, one of the other things I often do is I often read and review books. So today I want to talk about this, The Joy of Work. And I think this is a really important book for right now because the number of hours we're working is massively increasing. We're taking our work home and there's increasing stress we're all suffering from. And there's been clear correlations between the stress and actually our health, creativity, productivity. In one particular study done over nine years with bankers who can often work up to 15 hours a day, they found a correlation between their work and actually health. So there's a dramatic sort of weight gain, see, hair loss, duh, you know, inability to sleep, panic attacks, diabetes, health, you know, with their hearts, glandular, immune system breakdowns, leading on to all those other things which, you know, contribute to it, which is addiction to drink, to drugs, to actually um, smoking much too much, spending too much, using porn too much, etc. And actually, what was also important in this is this loss of empathy. And the person who, who, who conducted the research, a person called Michel, you know, concluded that these extras turned them into the worst versions of who they were because they didn't have the humanity left in them. You know, there's a massive sort of lot of work in that, you know, 50 hours is as much as you should really be putting into work. You know, and after that, you're going to massively reduce your efficiency. We've got to manage our boundaries much better. Now, the book gives 30 different tactics and ways you can do that. You know, helping to recharge yourself, helping to seek with a tea, and helping to get that energy and that buzz. So let's quickly go through some of these, not all of them. So the first one, helping to recharge. We've got to actually get the energy back inside of us. And we've got to cut off distractions. You know, things like have a monk morning, book time out so you can just focus on things. Celebrate headphones so you're less distracted by the, by the noise around you, particularly in these open plan offices we're in these days. Turn off notifications so we're not constantly addicted to our phones and our emails. And don't take our phones into meetings. Go for walking meetings. And this is something I often do. It's a massively powerful way of getting people to connect better and to get new stimulus from the outside. And it's been shown to increase the effectiveness and creativity by up to 60%. That's major. Then, you know, one thing is we've got to eliminate hurry sickness. We've got to slow down, you know, and not be in such a rush to move on to things. You know, even getting the elevator. We're on our phones checking stuff. Just chill. You know, sit on the tube on the bus and just relax a bit. Let the world settle down rather than actually always need to be on the go. Go to lunch. We actually only take 20 minutes lunch on average. We need to go to lunch, and the most important, go to lunch with other people. Because if you go to lunch with other people, you connect. There's the endorphins going around, we enjoy it more. You know, we forget about work a little bit more, and obviously we build greater connections. And the most obviously, get a good night's sleep. Massive work has shown that there's a massive correlation between the amount we sleep and actually our health. And actually, the more that we sleep, the better our creativity, the better we manage our temperament, the more effective we are. And actually, when we don't have enough sleep, we are often more prone to making mistakes. The other thing is to overflow the evil mill owner who sits inside our head. We get addicted to, we've got to be doing these hours and be seen to be there. You know, one of the problems is that we've got to like drop that and be more focused upon just delivering the results. And there's this thing called results only work environment. And then the next thing is I focus on doing one thing at a time. There's a myth about we can do multitasking. We can't. We just distract ourselves by doing something else. And it can take up to eight minutes to get back into what we were first doing. And that can waste a lot of time. And when we get into this thing called flow, which um, this um, Czech psychologist talked a lot about, it's the idea that we lose ourselves in the moment and time evaporates and we become very creative and it's a wonderful space to be in. So that's about recharging. The next thing is syncing. And we need to sync with teams, you know, and it's that magic glue that holds us together. And humans derive great joy from doing things in sync with each other be it singing, dancing, doing sports. I am a massive rower, you know, and I think that we, you know, the movement of people within a boat together is incredibly powerful as we lose ourselves in the synchronicity of, the, of each other, even if we're exhausted. The missing about staff engagement. There's a lot of work that's showing that, you know, 
the more you feel you belong to a space, the more you feel you've acknowledged and validated, the more you can be committed and put the time in. And people are feeling less connected with their work. They're feeling more as if they're just being used and abused. And actually, we've got to build this sense of family, this sense of community, very powerfully within our organisations. You know, a researcher, Jacob Morgan, found a massive correlation between engaged staff and organisational success. Companies that overinvest in positive employee engagement schemes, you know, will be 11 times more likely to appear in Glasses Guide Best Places to Work. But critically, you know, at least for the bosses concerned, it achieves four times the average profit per employee and twice the average revenue per employee. So actually, doing this stuff to bring the people together pays off, not only for the workers, but for the productivity of the organisation. So therefore, have tea breaks. Get socials together. Do the cakes on the Friday, whatever it takes. Another thing to talk about is laugh more. You know, kids laugh much more than adults do. And why do we think that we shan't laugh in the workplace? We don't need to be serious all the time. Enjoy it. Enjoy laughing because it gets our body moving and it's a wonderfully powerful state to be in. And actually stop being a bad boss. You know, 75% of workers said the worst part of the job was dealing with their immediate boss. So what makes a great boss? Well, there are two things, and obviously we can do ages about what makes a good boss. There are two categories, support and coaching. Be there for the people. Be emotionally engaged with them. Put your arm around them. Give them the help they need. And coaching, help to develop them to be the better version of who they can be. So let's move on to the last one, which is about you know, team buzz. And it's all about energy. This is all about energy. And I do a lot of work about defining and helping to unlock the energy inside teams and organizations. And this idea about framework is a positive. If you say, oh God, there's another crisis. and blah, blah. You know what? You're going to see it badly. If you say, hey, this is a bit of fun. This is something we can learn from. See it more positively. You'll be in a much better mental state to deal with it. And admit when you mess, messed up, there's something about, particularly with le leaders, if you want to really build trust, you do it actually strangely enough from demonstrating your fallibility rather than your perfection. And it also brings the rest of the people. It's a lot. I don't have all the answers. You know, I, I'm not sure what to do with it. What do the rest of you think? You bring people in. Then as you keep the teams lean, Jeff Sutherland did it, examined 3,800 projects, and he found there could be a 2,000 fold difference in effectiveness between teams. In other words, what one team would maybe take a week to do, another team could take. 2,000 weeks. Now that sounds incredible, but the reality is we've got to get teams working better together and understanding each other, listening to each other, respecting each other. And actually, you know, it's all the classic sort of agile scrum stuff that we already know about. Those are regular meetings to review program, setting smaller size, you know, um, sprints with, with tangible objectives. Don't try to do the big amorphous nonsense stuff. You know, set very specific target. Tar tar Hot debriefs immediately after the sprint finishes. And small team sizes, no more than seven. Because the more people you have, the more connections you've got to go and make. And I love this idea that two pizza rule. No, no team should be more than it takes um, to, to feed with two pizzas. And introduce a hack week. This idea about outside of normal work, set, set some sort of theme and say, like, let's all work together to find answers to this. And people self um, form teams and they come together, share their ideas, you know, over again, loads of pieces of beer. And you just have a bit of a fun out and you enjoy it. And you know, never know, you can really crack some new, some new thinking inside the organization. Last thing was champion diversity. This idea we need to have a diverse group of people because they help see a problem in many different ways. And McKinsey found that companies with the top 25% of ethnic and gender diversity reported above average financial returns. So what do I think about the book? You know, it's a, it's a really easy book to read because, you know, it's in little, nice little 30 bite-sized chunks. Lots of little sort of stories and things like that. So actually, I found it quite an easy book to read. However, that said, it's bloody difficult to do. It's easy to say, switch off your phone, leave work on this time. But you know, the trouble is we've got pressure to do that. So 
it's easy to say, bloody difficult to go and do. That's my criticism. And you know what? There's some overlap. I've just recently reviewed the psychology at work um, principles, and I really felt I was rereading chunks of that book. So you know, that's that's okay. But look. I think it's a really important book, a really important book now because we've got to get in charge of this because it's causing us massive destruction to our health and our relationships. So read it, look at my summary, but action whatever you can with it. That's all for now. See you next time. Ciao.